So in a previous video, um, I looked at a sample that I downloaded from the Articulate website, and this was something that they created as an example of how to build accessible uh, training using Ar Articulate Storyline. And it kind of had some some issues with it, and that's on the uh, examples tab of the website. So what I did is I took their template file and I kind of modified it to sort of um, try and take advantage of the things that they're doing well and to avoid some of the things that don't work as well. And so um, I'm just going to go through how I built the thing in Storyline and then I'm just going to run it with NBDA and this is going to be a pretty quick video. I think it's a little bit improved. You know, I'm not going to say that it's like any major news. It's not uh, any huge workarounds or anything like that. It's just kind of uh, just slightly better application of the stuff that they provide. So we're going to start out just at the beginning. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at the items on the page and look at the tab order. And what, one thing that I did is um, to the alternate text, I kind of used the content to label what is on the slide just to kind of help orient people when they tab through it instead of just saying you know um, you know just having the text of the heading or whatever I kind of put this is the page title or like a heading or something like that to kind of give them some landmarks that they're a little more used to hearing and then I've got the alt text and then I've just got like just regular old buttons on here instead of using the player buttons I kind of uh, made my own buttons that kind of have um, you know m more verbose instructions than is available in the normal player I think I'm, you know I could be wrong um, so we've got some different quiz items this one's about Swiss cheese the other one is about omelets let's see the yeah so there's that So these are all just kind of duplicates of each other. And then I used the um, pick one freeform question, which is this one here. And one thing that I did with this pick one is instead of having, um, let's see, let's see, look at this form view. So we've got the choice item in the form view. This is the name of the choice and then for some reason you have the ability to add additional text to these question items and I don't know why they did that but uh, if you look at the previous video it shows that it was not reading the choices for each of the check boxes and so you would have to check to get um, to, to have it read the the choice text and so I think embedding it as like part I'll, I'll go back to the slide view embedding it as part of the object that is the checkbox like here and here like this that it'll actually read it and I think that's a huge improvement over the sample and it's also like slightly better than what happens in the default um, graded question graded multiple choice question that uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of people are probably going to choose this to make their quizzes and articulate. So um, that's kind of what I did. I, and then uh, I used uh, what I do. I did some some modifications to their results screen. I, I took out a bunch of elements that were in the tab order that were just making it longer and. Uh, more complex to navigate through the quiz results and I just kind of made sure that it read through them in an orderly fashion. And then I also did this thing with this like array of buttons. I just put some numbers since there are a whole bunch of buttons and uh, I just put numbers in the button names just and so if you're like going through them with a screen reader and you can't see them you just kind of know that there's like a certain number to them and so as you're tabbing through you know, um, you can tell like which order you're on. And of course, uh, me being me, I, I 
did a button and I deleted it so my order's off, but you know, uh, that's how things become inaccessible. So if I were going to release this thing as something, I would just go through and make sure that everything was making sense. And I guess I am releasing it in kind of a way, but in a way I'm also not because uh, I'm just trying to get like the point across of like how to uh, change some of this stuff. So let's go ahead and um, run through this using JAWS. Let me go to the browser here. Where are we at? Oh, no, I'm actually in Firefox. Okay. And let me turn on NVDA. Speakers. Logitech USB headset. Dot. Pick one test review 360 Mozilla Fire. Okay, so let's just tab through it and see where we're at. Oh, yeah, because I did take away the previous and next buttons, and I used my own buttons for this. For, uh, I don't know, just because I, I wanted to. <laughs> I don't know. Page title, Omelette's Navigation Instructions. This course uses only the tab key for navigation. Use tab to move forward through the content, and use shift and tab keys to move backwards. Use the enter key to activate buttons. This course does not use heading levels for navigation, but the text content is divided into manageable sizes. Section. Okay, so I put some instructions in this header for the omelets. I could have put it off to the side and hidden it, like I showed in another video, but I didn't do that for this one. Omelette with sliced avocado and half of a grapefruit. Graphic. And I can tell by the uh, tablecloth that this is from the omeletry on Airport Boulevard. In this writer's opinion, Austin, Texas has the best om. Okay. Next slide button. Okay, next slide. Pick one test. New page loaded. And that's what I wanted to show you, and I forgot to show you in my run through. X main form. Let me turn this guy here. Okay, so what I did, because it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, that um, let's see, here we go. Did this have it too? Yeah, it's kind of a, a pet peeve of mine that. A new page loads and like the browser doesn't always catch it. It doesn't matter if it's Chrome, it doesn't matter if it's Internet Explorer, it doesn't matter if it's Firefox, it doesn't matter if it's NVDA, it doesn't matter if it's JAWS, it doesn't matter if it's VoiceOver. Sometimes like on a status change, even if it's supposed to, it doesn't announce it. So for this experiment, I sort of um, doctored it up with this uh, text-to-speech thing Kind of like I did in the uh, in the Captivate improvement video, and so uh, here's the trigger for that. So I text to speech is done through here by inserting audio text to speech, and then you just sort of um, wait <laughs> for it to launch. Just because I'm running the screen capture thing, and I'm also running um, NVDA and two or three web browsers, so everything's just like kind of slowed down. I hope I didn't crash that. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's our text-to-speech application. So you just uh, you just type in what you want and hit insert, and then it makes like a little audio file and gives it a unique name. It's an MP3, so it's kind of small. And the other thing that I did on the trigger is I gave. Uh, I gave the media two seconds to wait until JAWS said whatever it was going to say on load, and then after two seconds it plays the media that I embedded. And I think that this media is just something that says a new page has loaded. It doesn't say omelets, it doesn't talk about the picture, it doesn't talk about this text, it's not a complete transcription of everything. All I did is put something on there to tell you when the page was done loading so you would know to start running that tab key. Okay. So that's something that, uh, you know, I might do, I might not do it. It just depends on the uh, what the project is. Logitech USB head. Okay. Take one test review 360 Mozilla. Okay. Swiss cheese section. The other thing, like we talked about before, it always says section after a, after a text thing, and uh, that's that verbosity um, 
in JAWS, it's tutorial messages and in NBDA or other verbosity um, settings. But however I have it set now, uh, I haven't really dug into it that deep. Uh, it just tells me it's a, what does it say it is? It's a section. Large chunks of Swiss cheese graphic. Graphic. That's good. In this writer's opinion, okay. next slide button. Pick one test. New page loaded. Okay, see, now I know that the new page is loaded. I mean, I suppose the pick one test thing would mean something to somebody, but that's like not English. That's just, you know, the file name. Egg section. Six eggs in a carton graphic. In this writer's of next slide button. Pick one test. New page loaded. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. So, tab. Question one of three section. Tab. Which city has the best omelets? Austin radio button not checked one of three. And see, this is like, it seems like a little thing, but like being able to hear what your choice is so you can select it, uh, to me that is kind of crucial. So, Austin. Austin radio button checked one of three. I made omelets in Austin for 10 years as a young person, and I believe that Austin has uh, a lot of really good omelets, and I've never been to Denver or Spokane, so in my opinion, Austin has the best omelets, so that's just some logic for you. Denver radio button not check two of three. Spokane radio button not check three of three. Submit answer button. Rectangle four section. Correct response. Okay, I also doctored up this feedback slide to read out whatever the response was. And let me shut this down for a second. NVDA. Let's go back and look at this uh, quiz question. I'll show you exactly what I did there. This is the first one. And here's the feedback slide. And then I just followed the same process. Audio, insert, text-to-speech, typed in the text. And this is our correct feed, incorrect feedback, and there's our correct feedback. And all I did is I just cloned it and used the same template to make all three of the questions on here. And volume mixer speakers, Logitech U. Pick one test review 360 Mozilla Firefox. Pick one test review 360 Mozilla Firefox. Unknown. Pick one test review 360 Mozilla Firefox. Pick one test. Okay. Question two of three section. I don't know why Firefox was freaking out and just reading the same thing over and over again. But I did hear some conflicting audio that said new page is loaded. So, um, one thing about using a screen reader with things with audio is like I'm becoming a little more accustomed to listening to like two or three voices going on at the same time. Which city has the best Swiss cheese? Austin radio button not checked one of three. I mean, I suppose that like Basel, Switzerland has the best Swiss cheese, but I'm going to say Austin because that's just the author's opinion. Austin radio button checked one of three. Denver radio button not checked two of three. Spoken radio button not checked three of three. You know, I might be able to like um, modify like the alt text on these on these radio buttons, cleverly disguised as checkboxes. Uh, well, one thing I would also like to point out is that it, with this exercise, it is not reading the thing that says use the arrow keys to navigate. And one thing, I think I was trying it like maybe with JAWS or in a different, no, um, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was showing that same error that I pointed out before. So maybe in NVDA I did turn off some verbosity settings or something. So it could be one or it could be the other, you know. Uh, I would say just check it all out if you're going to use this stuff for anything serious. Submit answer button. Okay, and I was going to say doctoring up uh, the like this area like here. Unknown cursor. Normal to, cursor. Unknown cursor. Normal cursor. To like have a way to um, press a, a different key to submit it or something like that. But I think going through all the answers and then submitting is fine too. Rectangle four section. Correct response. Okay. Also, the feedback text to speech announcement is also on like a two second timer. Correct section. That's right. You selected the correct response. The correct response is 
Austin section. Continue button. Pick one test. New page loaded. Question 3 of 3. Which city has the best eggs? Austin radio button not checked 1 of 3. Denver radio button not checked 2 of 3. Denver radio button checked 2 of 3. I don't know. Those eggs in Denver are uh, pretty awesome. So I'm going to go with that answer. Even though I've never... They tell me <laughs> that the eggs in Denver are pretty good. Spoken. Submit answer button. Rectangle for Incorrect section. Incorrect response. Incorrect section. You did not select the correct response. The correct response is Austin section. I should have known. Continue button. Pick one test. New page loaded. Okay. What happens? Uh, I haven't been doing it for this demo. But what happens if I try and play everything with the caps lock A key? Nothing. What happens if I try and find links with the K button? Okay. Nothing. What happens if I press down NVDA and K at the same time? It should uh, have a linkless list. Okay. No. Nothing. L. L. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so we're back to tab again. Button. Browser tabs toolbar, navigation, combo, search, page, content, pick one test, visited link, browser tabs, navig, com page, app, library, pick one test, review three, content, pick one test. Okay, I've totally lost my, uh, <laughs> my screen. Visited link content. Browser tabs toolbar, tab control, oh, navigation okay. toolbar, toolbar, back button, sub menu one, of, combo, search, page app, library, but content visited link. Pick one test. Space. Yeah, I've completely lost it. So let's try and like figure out what's going on up here. Um, normal cursor, normal cursor. Section. Unknown cursor. Unknown cursor. Unknown cursor. Quit. You didn't there pass we go. section. You're eight, okay. Let me go back up to the one top. One exit. Visited link content. Browser. Now. Pick one test. Visited. Browser tabs toolbar. Tab control. Pick one test. Review 360 tabs. Selected three of three. Okay. Navigation toolbar tool. Combo. Search. Page action. Library. Pick one test review 360 document button. There we Quiz go. Quiz results section. Okay. You didn't pass section. Your score section. 66.66% section. Passing score 80% section. One exit course button. Three retry quiz button. Four print results button. Button. Browser tabs toolbar tab control pick one test review three hundred and six. Okay, so few a few things. Uh, our unhappy looking avatar graphic did not get read. Uh, that was taken out of the tab order. Our buttons went pretty well Unknown here. Cursor. And uh, it didn't tell me to skip navigation. Maybe I don't I don't know why. I have no idea. Uh, it's possible when I downloaded the template file the same one that we kind of looked at uh, before it's possible that like that template was like the uh, built before they implemented the always on skip navigation button feature possibly and when I downloaded it and tried to open it in the most current version of storyline it had to convert it to be convert the file to be compatible with the new version of Storyline. So maybe the fact that it's not um, enforcing that skip navigation link on every single slide is because uh, this is a, this uh, template was generated in a prior version of Storyline. So anyway, this is just kind of like a different way of looking at designing accessible stuff in storyline some different methods to like bypass some of the more like uh, unworkable things that people want to include in storyline and it, it's definitely to me an improvement over the one that they um, 
uploaded and said was like the be all end all you know so uh, I appreciate all the work that the people at Storyline do and uh, the work that they've done on accessibility and all the support uh, things that they've tried to provide but if anything I think that they really need to like place extensive focus on getting the accessibility stuff to like be up front in the interface of Storyline to where you don't have to dig to find this stuff and so that it works and so that like all these annoying little bugs don't pop up all the time like you know in the accessibility world we're always saying and I don't even necessarily consider myself part of the accessibility community you know there I said it um, I'm just trying to figure out how to get this stuff to work I don't think that you know five people in a meeting room are going to like change a whole lot uh, I think that you know as if, if every like individual in their practice would like at least just kind of like you know um, just accept it that things have to be accessible and just make it a routine thing it's not being part of a special community you don't need to be a gatekeeper that like this is accessible this isn't accessible and then just like leave it at that just try to do stuff and just put it out there and it's not like a club that you belong to it's just a thing that you do and I think that um, the fact that like accessibility folks tend to like beat up on people who are like new to it you know that's been my experience and you know I've done a bit of that myself you know just being like rude to people when they don't have like the technical like knowledge to do a lot of this stuff so I think um, the more accessible you make the quote unquote accessibility community and the more, like friendlier like the whole thing is and we're trying to help each other and not beat up on each other all the time then that's good you know and I think that like if Storyline and Captivate you know made it like their mission to make things you know my tangent about the accessibility community they always say accessibility first okay so if that were like the viewpoint of these software manufacturers then nothing would ship if it had just like one thing in it that was inaccessible like they would fix it before they shipped it and that they would put fixing the accessibility issues like number one being able to create accessible stuff and number two having the actual tool itself being accessible uh, you know it would only take like five years to fix everything but anyway I feel very proud of myself that I stayed off my soapbox until the very end and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and step down now and just uh, thanks for listening and I hope that this website uh, is uh, useful for people OBS 64C.